Hey everyone, I just finished watching the new Fallout show on Amazon, and absolutely loved it. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, especially if you've played any of the games. Seeing the game world recreated so well for the show has made me want to replay every single game. Now if you're new to the world of Fallout, and want to play one of the games after watching the show, you may be wondering which one you should start with. I personally recommend Fallout 4 for a starting point for anyone new to the series, but I'll go over each game and explain why I chose that one. I want to preface this by saying you can start wherever you like. While the lore as well as several of the factions and items in the games are all linked, they are all different stories, with different locations and characters, and you won't be missing out by not starting with the first game and going through them all in order. Second, whatever game you choose, be sure to also play all the available download content it may have. All the DLCs for the games are well worth it. And I apologize in advance, some of my gameplay recordings for Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 4 were taken off my Xbox, so the resolution isn't as good as the ones I did off my computer. So, starting off with their originals. Fallout 1 and 2 were both great. I played them when they released in the late 1990s, but that was a long time ago, and they are obviously very dated. The gameplay is top-down isometric and turn-based. Combat is similar to Baldur's Gate 3 if you've played that game. During it, you go in turns, with you and each NPC moving or taking its actions at separate times. As a note, be sure to also look up all the controls. These games are from an era when you got little booklets with the game that explained how to play, so you don't really get any tutorials on the controls or the gameplay like in modern games. And be sure to save often. You can easily get in over your head and end up dead. Due to the age of these games, many people will not enjoy them. I personally think they are still a lot of fun, and you get a huge amount of lore, but if you are used to modern games, they may not be enough to keep you wanting to play, especially with the slower pace of gameplay. I'd say if you are really interested in the Fallout lore, getting as much of it as possible, and don't mind the dated gameplay, then absolutely give them a try. Otherwise, skip them. At least for now. The next couple Fallout games, I say don't even bother with. Fallout Tactics was okay, I just could not get into it at the time. It is also debatable whether it is canon or not. And Brotherhood of Steel from 2004 was, in my opinion, a huge letdown. It was the first Fallout game to be released on console, and as such, you may even have a hard time finding a playable version of it nowadays. So unless you absolutely must play them so you can say you played all Fallout games, just stay away from these two. They are not worth the money or the time. The next entry into the series is Fallout 3 from 2008. This game came with a huge change to the core mechanics of the Fallout series. No longer a top-down isometric, it became a first-person shooter of sorts. It still relied heavily on Fallout style and the combat mechanics, but it just eliminated the turn-based mode in favor of a more real-time shooter, with the type of pause function called VATS. It was also available on consoles. I remember when it first came out, it was a fair bit divisive amongst fans. Many did not like what Bethesda did to the Fallout title, by changing it from the turn-based isometric game that they knew, and making it, quote, over-the-top silly. Now in my opinion, yes, they may have dialed up the silliness, but it has always been there, especially if you spent the time fully exploring and talking to all the NPCs in the original games. Overall, Fallout 3 has a great story. It has several different choices you can make in-game, which will drastically change things. And it also does have a certain amount of replayability to explore the different choices you make throughout. The DLCs for this game add a huge amount of content, with new areas to explore, new items, and higher level caps. While I have not gone back to play Fallout 3 in its entirety, I have many fond memories of it and I absolutely recommend you play it and all its DLCs at some point. But it is showing its age, which is why I say play Fallout 4 first, 
especially if you prefer more modern games. The next game was Fallout New Vegas. This one was created by Obsidian Entertainment and published by Bethesda in 2010. This game was by far my favorite. I love everything about this game. The base game was great, and the DLCs were some of the best in my opinion. What really set this one apart for me was the story and the writing. I have played this one several times, including a full playthrough not too long ago. Fallout New Vegas added some new mechanics compared to Fallout 3, changing up the perk and skill system, and adding in new bullet types you could craft, as well as some weapons and armor modifications and repairs you could do. The landscape is great, you have everything from desert wastes to a thriving Vegas city, complete with casinos that have actual games you can really play. Something I think they did really well in this game was the reputation system, and the different factions you can join. You can get varying levels of good or bad reputations with each town and each faction. You can even wear the armor of certain factions to kind of blend in with them and sneak around. The DLCs all add even more interesting locations and stories. They can even have major impacts on the base game. Each DLC has a very interesting and unique atmosphere with some great writing. If you don't mind older graphics and gameplay, this is actually the game I would recommend you start with. Then in 2015, Fallout 4 came out. And although it's almost 10 years old, I think it still holds up very well. The base game is great, I have spent days playing and replaying it, but I also recommend all the DLCs. One in particular, the Nuka World one, will actually let you play as a raider, both in the DLC and also the base game. And you can even fix and ride a roller coaster. Fallout 4 also had some other major changes compared to the previous ones. Fats no longer acted like a pause where you decide your attacks, now it just slowed down the world. And your skill tree was different along with several other small things. But two of the biggest changes they introduced were the addition of the settlement building system, and mod support for consoles. One of the best things about Bethesda games is the full mod support. There are some astounding mods out there that do everything from minor cosmetic things to full-blown new games. It's well worth looking up the top mods to install, but even without mods, this is a great game. The settlement building they added was a feature that I always enjoyed and spent hours doing. However, the nice thing is, you do not ever need to build a settlement to play through the entire game, if that does not interest you. There are a couple of quests that introduce you to how that works, but you can largely avoid them. The only downfall to the settlement building is it seems several major locations in the game feel odd, being a bit barren or underbuilt, just because they expected you to build your own thriving settlement, instead of already having a town built up. However, thanks to the mods, you can easily find already built settlements to just add into your game from the start. One great mod author who has some excellent fully built up and decorated settlements is No Respawns. He also has a ton of great video tutorials and tours on building in both this game and Fallout 76, and he is still releasing more. I've linked his channel below, and I 100% recommend you go take a look if you are not already subscribed to him. Overall, even though Fallout 4 is not my favorite one of the bunch, it is my pick for the first Fallout game you should play, especially if you are new to Fallout. Because not only is it more modern than the others, but it also offers plenty of things to do. And I think it has something for everyone. Plus, it also just recently got a big update from Bethesda. And finally, the most recent Fallout game, Fallout 76. This game had a very rough start, and even now, after many updates, it is not for everyone. Although, thanks to the TV show, it has had a massive boost in popularity. I was really looking forward to this game, and really wanted to enjoy it. Unfortunately, I could just never bring myself to play more than a few hours into it. I will say, when I first played it back when it was released, I really did enjoy the story and the gameplay. And I still do now, after all the updates. However, some of the major changes to the core mechanics for this game they made just make it far less enjoyable for me. So what did they change? 
while the story in this one predates all other Fallout games. You are a member of Vault 76, and the game starts on Reclamation Day, about 25 years after the bombs fell. You are to venture out into the wild and start civilization again. And they decided to make it an online-only game, meaning you must have an active internet connection and will play on servers, either public or private ones. You would also play with up to 24 other people. Now, in my opinion, Bethesda did handle the online multiplayer aspects quite well. You can do PvP, but you can also fully avoid it. And largely, the player base is very kind, with a few exceptions, of course. However, you don't actually need to worry about some bad player just harassing you non-stop, because there's not actually much they can do to affect you unless you engage them back, and you can easily just switch servers. One of the other huge changes they made that many people hated was there were no other humans around except for the other players. This was due to the new time setting for the game. There were still robots, ghouls, and mutants, just no human NPCs to talk to or trade with. The storyline involved a lot of reading notes or computers that were scattered around, which was sometimes a pain because being an online game, it doesn't pause when you are reading something. So often you would be interrupted mid-sentence because something was attacking you. Later on, Bethesda added humans back into the game. Unfortunately, I find this is very weird and immersion-breaking. You have quests and stories about how there is no one around, and the expectation is that the area you are in is quite lonely. But then you look up and there is some random NPC standing right in front of you, trying to give you a different quest. But the main reason I have not gotten into this game, and why I don't actually recommend it, is due to the fact it is online only. You are not able to pause. As a parent, the ability to pause a game is crucial for me. I play games after my kids have gone to bed, but they often wake up and need attention. And well, most times my wife is amazing about dealing with them, so I don't need to abandon my games. Sometimes she is unavailable, so I need to temporarily leave my game. For me, there's nothing worse than having to exit the server or just risk dying in the middle of something just to leave for a few minutes. Especially, for example, when you lose all the progress you made in clearing the enemies from an area. I also often don't have more than a couple hours at a time to play a game. And unlike a private game, when you save and exit this one, you don't come back to it in the exact same state as when you left it. Things and enemies are all back in their original spots. This is horrible for my playstyle. I like to be very thorough and explore everything. And I hate that when I play this game, I'll only be halfway through exploring an area and then need to quit for the night. Then when I come back the next day, all the enemies I cleared will have respawned, and I will need to waste tons of time just re-killing them to explore a branching path that I did not take the first time around. There are private servers that might solve this issue, however I have not tried them, so I don't know how they work. You unfortunately need to pay an extra subscription-based fee for them, and I personally don't want to spend the extra money. But if none of that bothers you, and you don't actually mind, or you do like online server style games, this one would be the top one to play. It has all the right atmosphere, the settlement building was expanded on, and from what I've seen, the quests are loads of fun. I just can't get past having to repeat my actions over and over in a game when I have limited time to play, and more games on my list that I want to play than I actually have time for. So for me, and others in my situation, I say skip this game for now. It is absolutely worth giving a try at some point, but hold off until they offer a free trial. It seems that they do that at least once a year. Well, that is my overview of each game and my recommendation on where to start. If you've played the games before, what's your opinion on the best game for a new player to start with? And for those that watched it, what did you think of the show? Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and have fun exploring the Fallout world.